Thanks for dropping into the cast party. Join the cast and crew as they are lugged from their Hollywood film set into the crazy world of Dungeons and Dragons. And action! Oh God, come on, they can't even play their organ right? It's just like back home. I wonder if my parents can forward them my piano teacher's info. Dang, they could use it. Ludwig would never let this kind of sloppiness pass. Just like he always said, A major or see you later. <laughs> oh god, F sharp or you're playing the harp. Ugh, that one always stuck with me. I hated when my mom made me play her harp. Like, yeah, I killed it, but it's not like you can shred on a harp. Oh, come on. All right, that's it. That wasn't even a proper staccato. Move the heck over. I'm showing you how it's done. God, get. Have you ever wanted to watch an 80s inspired jet themed workout series? Of course you have. Who doesn't want to see Vince? Oh, I mean jet in the smallest short shorts you've ever seen. Well, when we hit 150 members of the cast and crew, we will be filming our D&D themed workout series, Sweat with Jet. It's mainly for laughs, but we promise it'll actually make for a decent workout too. So head on over to patreon.com slash cast party to become an official part of our cast and crew. So many exclusive goodies, like access to hours upon hours of exclusive bonus content, an invite to our community discord, as well as entry into our merch giveaway that we do for every cast party episode. Speaking of, this episode's merch giveaway winner is... Chloe! If you want some merch for yourself, head on over to cast-party.myshopify.com. Shirts, hoodies, stickers, and so much more. Thank you all so much for listening. Enjoy the episode, cast and crew. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cast Party. My name is Colin McManus, and I will be your director for today. I am joined by my accused cast and crew, Ryan McManus. I, Sebastian Vivaldi Greensleeves, an emo at heart musician who has only been pulled over by the police once in his life. It was the first time he took his tour van out with the trailer attached to practice driving it around. He misjudged the size of the trailer and accidentally took out a mailbox. A nearby cop pulled him over, assuming he was drunk driving. Out of nervousness, Sebastian handed the cop his credit card instead of his identification. That did not help his case. Excellent. Anna Brisbane. Blueberry Sky, elven druid actress, and in the film they were making, The Through the Realms of Miria, she plays an elven forest mystic named Ashera Toralai. And the reason she took on the project was because she was told that this character was vegan and that the whole message of the film was about saving the environment and the animals and stuff. And it is true that Eshera is only ever seen eating plant-based foods in the film, but there's also no lines that explicitly say she's definitely vegan, but <laughs> Blueberry definitely had intentions of speaking enthusiastically about this, quote, fun fact on the promo tour. Excellent. Hell yeah. That's yeah. meta as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Nigel Deacon. What's snapping, Xander Gucci Supreme? who learned the in-depth history of the concept of dibs from a duck that he met. Now, he knows it sounds crazy, but certain trips bring certain information and that's just a fact of life. But the crux of the information was that the ducks invented dibs and he thinks it has to do with mating and it's more violent than the people form of dibs. <laughs> that's, that's good. Prop. That's good. <laughs> oh, Mallard. Finally, Vince Perito. Hi, Jet the Boulder Chambers, big burly heartthrob who absolutely despises the movie Inception simply because he cannot stand the thought of the ending of that movie. It makes him so mad thinking about that spinning top at the end. Oh, is it going to go down? It isn't. Is it staying? And then it ends. And he's like, yeah, no. What's the answer? What is the answer? I actually relate to Jet for once. What the fuck? God, that fucking movie. It makes me so mad. I love that movie, but that ending, it makes me go crazy. I think it's the perfect ending for that movie. <laughs> well, on that note, let's talk about what happened last time. You did some digging around Chandra's house while cleaning up Chandra and Curtis's bodies. Xander had his bejeweled dagger slip out of its sheath and into the blood of Curtis on the ground below. 
Jet took Xander's dagger to have a chat later, and you all put Chandra and Curtis in cages. Blueberry took a book that Chandra had been running for, and the three of you snuck back off to the tents while Xander ran back and started shouting for help. Redstream came out with another man, and you took them to Chandra's where they took over the situation. Rather uneventful, other than the large man with Redstream who you later found out to be Solik said, if anything happened to Chandra, our position here could be ruined. You headed back to your tents for the night and spoke about Xander, expressing your opinions on what is going on. Jet gave the bejeweled dagger back to Xander, and with a second of the three gems filled with blood. You headed to bed in the morning, everyone was quite chilly, other than Jet, who awoke a little warm and went outside completely naked. He quickly realized the hard skin on his shoulder was spreading to much of his torso, was cold to the touch, and white. After getting dressed, you met up with Redstream at the Destin Church, watched a rather uncomfortable prayer where Blueberry noticed a few members of the Destins were rolling their eyes or disinterested. Solik brought you into a small office where he had cast some sort of silent spell before accusing you of killing Pojin. Now, Solik is sitting here with his arms crossed, leaning back in his chair, staring at the four of you in this small office. And so the scene is set. The question is... So what do you have to say for yourselves? You can speak freely. No one else can hear us. Explain to me how you knew of Pojin, came into town asking about him just after his murder, and then were seen at the location of some sort of crime with a now missing magistrate mage slayer. The one who has been investigating us and interrogating us for years. Whether you are working for the magistrate is beyond me. All I know is you are working against us with everything you have done here since your arrival in Frost Send. Whoa, okay, let, let's take just two seconds for a little breather, okay? That's a lot of accusations. And I'm not hearing any answers. Okay, all right, all right, let's back, let's back it up. Back it up. Beep. Twerk it beep, just a little. Beep. Not the time, Blueberry. Does he know what a backup <laughs> <laughs> no, he wouldn't know what it is. That's why I followed up with twerk it up, because, like, you know, just back it up. You know, back that ass up. He wouldn't know what twerking is either. I know. You don't know that. You don't know that. All right, so we 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 have arrived here looking for Pojin uh, because there's some shit going on in the capital. The queen told us about him, and we came up here to to look for him because he was supposed to be able to help us. So, all right, so our friend, let's call him uh, Puppy. <laughs> Puppy was up here looking for Pojin with the queen, who is currently on the run from the fake queen that's in uh, the capital. Um, that's not our fault. The puppy was like, whoa, there's a giant monster wolf coming after us. Help, Pojin. And Pojin was like, poof, you out. And then... Uh, I guess Pojin got killed by the wolf man, or the... No, not the wolf man. Specifically not the wolf man. Hound? Yeah, no, no, no. It was not, it was not Puppy. And then Puppy reached out to us and was like, hey, some shit went down. And then here we are. We were like, oh, let's go check it out. Let's go check out Pojin, see if he's okay. Let's see if our friend's still here. And uh, all of that is not how it happened. Like, there's no, it's not okay. There is no Puppy. And then... I got attacked by a lady that was trying to sleep with me. So you could see his eyes just slowly have been narrowing a little bit more, a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> so your friends were here visiting Pojin before he was attacked. Yeah. Yes. And now they're gone. Different plane. So how did they contact you? Oh, no, we got phones. our cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a word that doesn't exist. They, they, they look like rocks, and they, they, you know. You have sending stones. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sending phones. And you just happen to be close enough by to arrive here within a day's time. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Just right around the corner. I don't know when we got that message, actually. I don't. It was quick. Wait, did Pojin get, like, murdered, like, re like how recently was that? Because, like, we we really don't have, like, a lot of information about a lot of this. So was that, like, a thing that happened, like, yesterday? Seem to know a lot more than we do. Oh. What, what do you know? And he looks at you, Xander. Tell me. Are you bleeding? Uh, 
or not anymore. I don't think. Then why was there blood in Chandra's house? And more importantly, why was there so little? Almost as if someone did their best to clean up after whatever occurred there. Damn it, I thought I did a good job. <laughs> Sebastian, <laughs> shut oh, up, dude. Did you say that out loud? That was under my breath. Um, well, like I said, I got attacked by the lady that tried to kill me. And who was that? Uh, fuck, what was her name? Chandra. Chandra. And where is she? Well, see, that's that's the mystery, because, like, I got attacked. You got attacked, and you don't know where she went. All right. And yet you don't have a scratch on you. Look, dog, I healed. My friends, they can, they, you know, they're very good at doing medicine. Cannot everyone just heal overnight? Is that not, like, a thing? <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it done it every day. <laughs> well, okay, actually, you know what, boss? Let me ask you one one quick question. Chandra was investigating you correct that's what you said all of the destined so that is to say that she was not necessarily on your side correct then i don't feel obligated to be untruthful with you i was looking for information from her i thought that her attraction to me or fake attraction whatever it turned out to be would have been like a good avenue for me to get information so I went, then she attacked me because she could smell magic on me or something. Oh no, she, Sebastian, that was you, wasn't it? You freaking, you did magic like right in front of me and then she noticed. Is that how she caught on? I mean, yeah, she must have. She smelled you. I made him smell like Gucci. Yeah, that was probably <laughs> it. Like moments after we said, don't do magic, you were just like, brah, magic. I did say that, didn't I? I appreciate you looking out, but anyway, she knew I was magic. She went after me. We were suspicious. We fought back. She was uh, dealt with, and then they changed. So they they look like what they are now. So like with those bodies that were in there, that's Chandra and uh, Keith? Curtis. Curtis. And we cleaned it up because we didn't know what side everyone was going to be on. So I'm trusting you right now that you and us are at least on a similar side. Maybe not the same side, but same half of the circle. One fourth of the trapezoid, you know? I feel like I've shown that. I left you in a open room. One against four. Me not holding a weapon in a silenced room. If we were enemies, you could have dealt with me long ago. Oh, true. Dog, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> So that's why there are still questions to be asked. You were here. You're obviously working against the magistrate. Oh, yeah. Why now? Who killed Pojin? Uh, we, have, we, have, we have an inclination about that. We think it was a hound that's really, really good at tracking from the magistrate. And a big guy with a glaive. Could we play back that message that we had before? Or was that a one-time deal? Ooh, I could show them the video. The wedding? Of, like, the people that we'd be talking about. We had the video of the fight. We don't have the hound, though, in there, but you could still show them the keeper. That's true. I'll pull out my camera and, like, show the playback of the keeper. Does this guy look familiar? Never seen him before. Not here. Well, this guy with his big old uh, hound, they were tracking... The guy I said puppy earlier, his name is Adderwolf. He's protecting the real queen... And they are uh, on the run right now because the queen that's in the capital right now, quote unquote queen, that is some bad bitch from the magistrate Desideria mm -hmm. in disguise. And she's planning some sort of like hostile magistrate takeover of Fendrea. Oh, she's probably been here, right? She's she's all about that cold shit. I, I know of Desideria. Yeah, I knew you would. This is worse than I thought. The Destined need to move quickly. If Chandra is gone and whatever is going on in that house, those changelings, I'm assuming, at this point. Oh, because they change. They change. They're changer changelings. They have the ability to change what they look like. Oh, I'm like a skinwalker. Are you born that way or you can, like, learn it? Or are you, like, someone gives you the power? Some are born that way. Others learn how to use it. <sighs> 
Listen, the Destin need to move quickly. If Chandra is gone, the Magistrate will find out soon. Meaning the Magistrate will send more investigators, meaning we will have more Magistrate presence here, breathing down our necks. Especially now that Pojin is gone, they know that there are mages by the Evergem. We are nearing the completion of our research. We may need to pull the trigger now before the extra Magistrate gets here. Trigger? What research are you talking about? Is it with the Evergem, or... Is there something else here that you're looking at as well? You still must prove yourself before we tell you anything else. I, I can make us all tell the truth no matter what right now. If we can gain your trust by that, I will do it right now. Haven't we done enough too? We just took out like one of, I'm assuming, a very high ranking magistrate member as one. I know it's it's kind of causing a little bit of a, a avalanche, but I mean, that that's one less enemy. That's the that problem. We had Chandra tricked. You knew? Well, sounds like she had you guys tricked. First off, you didn't even know she was blue, so... <laughs> that didn't matter to us. She didn't know what we were doing here. What is this trigger you're gonna pull? Why don't we head over to Pojins? We'll bring Redstream, and we can figure out if what you say is true. Yeah, we would love to investigate there. We haven't been there yet. Yeah, we've been trying to go there. That's that's fine. Let's go now. It sounds like he's got a dope house. It's not much. Lead the way, Captain. You head outside. Heading towards the southwest, you can see there are large icebergs just off the coasts, as well as some that have crashed into the coast and become part of the surroundings. You all can see almost immediately a large iceberg that, when looked at just the right way, looks like a wave. It goes up and then curls over, where the ice gets a little more white in color. As you're moving forward, an entrance is not immediately visible. Solik takes you around this large iceberg and then up some small pathways of snow. Do you see two destined guards here, stationed by a fire? They stand up quickly as Solik approaches. Man your posts. You can see a large opening into this iceberg. And as Solek continues in, he stops and turns around to look at you. Tell me before we go inside. How many guests did Pojin have that night? Should be two. Two. Three. No, they had the king. Oh. Oh, yeah, it was three. Yeah, there was one other guy who has died. King Thuridin. Oh, and maybe a big dragon? TBD. Not, Not big, but like as big as us. Like our size shakes his head quizzically. The inside of the iceberg is much smaller than the outside. It looks like it has been magically carved out with spells, but just to open up an area big enough for a few things. A desk, some red buried bushes, which have been grown inside this little cave, a small bed, a table with two chairs, and a small storage area. The area right now has two spots with blood-stained ice. <gasps> One has the remains of a small skeleton sitting atop of the blood pool. Coming from this area is what looks like a lightning bolt burned into the icy ground beneath, heading towards the door. There's also the remains of a broken wall with ice shards all around it, as well as scorch marks. It looks like some sort of battle happened here, and that magic was definitely used. Oh my god, this body is still here? Oh damn. Oh. Those burn marks are definitely Adderwolf's dragon, right? Mm. Uh, wouldn't Umbral have made those scorch marks? I mean, unless they were conjuring up some fire. I mean, it could have been Pojin. He was a pretty powerful dude, right? Yeah. Adderwolf couldn't do anything with fire himself, could he? No. Off to the side, you see that there are currently three sleeping bag type things laid out, as well as a large pile of other blankets. Three guests and a small dragon. Interesting. Does someone want to take a closer look? That's not me. I'll take a look. What are you specifically looking for? That's a great question. I, I mean, I guess I'd be looking at Pojin's body without disturbing it or like disturbing any of this stuff around it. Can I follow the lightning bolt that's burnt into the ground? Both of you guys roll investigation. All right. First for realsies roll new dice. 13. 14. Sebastian, as you're looking, 
you trace this lightning bolt. You can see it almost looked like Pojin was working with his hands and feet, and it looks like he stomped the ground in this one location, and this lightning bolt cracked through the ice heading towards the opening in the door. Damn. You follow the branching pathways, and at one point you find an area that definitely seems like there was another sharp crack. It almost looks like it connected with something here. And as you look around, you actually see similar scratch marks to the ones that you found in Chandra's house. Man, he was really trying to keep these things away. Oh, guys, there's the scratch marks again. We saw them once in Chandra's. There's more here. Oh, interesting. So that means that the hound was like making his rounds. It was definitely the hound. Why would he be in the house though? Xander, with your investigation, you see Pojin's eyes are completely white. Pupils and iris is gone. Uh, hey, yo, I'm not, I'm not like big into medicine, so I don't know if this happens when, when a gnome dies, but he ain't got no pupils. His eyes are just like milky white. We have never seen it happen before. Uh, oh, sh- I don't like that. I'm going to druidcraft some pollen in my palm and it's going to start to like glow yellow and float up in little puffs and I'm going to blow on it and cast detect magic. Ooh. Ooh. I think it would float to any of the magic around it, stick to it and like glow a different color depending on what type it is. You can see that there is a bunch of evocation magic that seems like it had originated from Pojin. There is remnants of it in the lightning bolt. The scorch marks on the wall seems like it was done by this as well. And you can see that there is another blood spatter not near Pojin. And this blood spatter, there's a bunch of pollen that forms this ovular shape. It glows a light pink, dark purple. You see conjuration magic from there. I'm I'm sensing some conjuration magic right here over the blood, which is weird. Oh, like making stuff, but with magic? Yeah, like summoning things, like when I bring spirits and beasts out. Blue Bear, give me an arcana check while you're looking at this. Roll it with advantage. You're using detect magic and you have extra knowledge about it. Oh, thank God. 16. This is conjuration. It is creating something from nothing. But with your previous experience, you know that this is kind of what happened to you guys. This seems like creating a portal. (gasps) I think this is where the portal was made by Pojin and then they stepped through and now it's gone. Oh, and that blood is the king's because he got chomped. Yeah, I guess so. Got chomped on the way out. Do you think that Pojin sacrificed himself? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. He was, like, at least protecting the queen and Adderwolf and the king. He might have been fending them off while trying to get them out of here. To get them to a new plane. There's no way that he could have made it in time. I want to look at these berries on the wall. They look like berries that have been made to grow in frozen climates. Can I figure out if they're, like, normal berries? Or if they they don't have any magic on them? They are the equivalent of good berries. Whoa! Anyone hungry? Oh, I can eat. We didn't have breakfast. Yeah, anyone want a donut? Oh, yeah. Pull out the bag. Ooh, berries on the donuts. Donut good berries? There you go. No, you'd be very full. Let's pull out some donies. Four donies, please. Perfect. Uh, Sorry, guys. These are kind of just for us. (laughs) No, I'm going to eat a berry. I don't need a donut. I'm going to grab like three good berries and put them on a donut and eat that. No! That's three days worth of food. Well, then he won't be hungry. What'd you say? Oh, my God. It's pretty good. I want to try. You're going to regret that. Can we please not eat in here? Oh, true. Oh, yeah. That's That seems disrespectful. They're plain donuts, so there's no, like, stuff. Yeah, on. just can you just toss them back in the bag? I'll have mine when we're done. Yeah. Oh, what happens if you put a donut in the bag? Oh, my gosh. Okay, put yours and mine back in the bag, and then we'll... We'll figure it out. Maybe it's like a double-decker donut. Or maybe they get filled when they're in there. Anywho, I want to look under the bed. Give me a perception. Dirty 20. 
you go over to the bed you look underneath it there's some boxes and stuff here you look through them real quick doesn't seem that exciting but as you're looking around you're like I wonder what's under the pillow there is a small Valerithy seal <gasps> I wave it around what'd you find? like a symbol you saw the one that Adwolf had that denotes him as the protector of the princess what about the oh. one on my on my armor? Is is it the same as that? It looks extremely similar with a couple small changes. This is not Adewolf's though. I found a thing. I don't know what this is. We don't know much about Pojin's past. I think it's because he worked for the kingdom. Our friend Adewolf, he he has an emblem close to this. He he gave me this one too, and I I point at mine. Adewolf's was specifically for protector of the princess. And I think yours was protector of, like, the realm. So I wonder if it's a unique pendant given to Pojin because he was the one who, like, worked on the princess. Now queen. Maybe these are different emblems for different ranks of, of the protectors of the queen and her followers. Or just signifying some sort of importance to the city of Valorith. Because that's where he worked on the, the princess. <sighs> Why don't you give me an uh, investigation while you're looking at it? I throw it in the air. I'll do it. I'll do it too. I got a lovely two. Uh, I got a 14 investigation. Sebastian, after looking at this one, you know it probably means something similar to Adwolf's. It almost looks like it is embodying the heart of Valorant. Adwolf's was specifically protector of the princess. This probably means something of the princess or of the royal family. Yeah, Jet, because like yours has yours has like the protector kind of feel. And then this is like slightly tweaked and your yours is slightly tweaked from Adwolf's. I think you're right. I think this is some sort of unique role that Pojin played for Valorith. Maybe it was like doctor or something wasn't he kind of uh like healing her when she was young yeah cut her open i'll, I'll go to him and, and just show him both the the emblem that we found in mine on me is this proof enough to you that that we are friends of pojin that we are friends of the queen and adwolf you knew exactly how many people were going to be here you knew that pojin was most likely deceased when you came here what are you trying to learn why are you here when our friend told us that Pojin sent them to another realm, we were wondering if Pojin could do that for us. We're not really from here. We were just living on a prayer that he was somehow still alive. He walks over to that area. Well, if you're going wherever they went, this would be a good place to start. Wait, is this active? No, it's not active, but... It's a lot easier now than it ever has been. There's a connection here. This is a connection point between the two planes. What the wait, fuck? Oh. Wait a minute. How do we, how do we activate it? How do you it? do that? It hasn't sizzled out yet? It is always easier to go through a place that already has a connection. It takes an incredibly powerful wizard like Pojin to be able to conjure a portal from nowhere to another plane. And even then, they need to know exactly where the plane is, what part of the cosmic winds cycle is going through. They need to know all of these things before they can send anyone anywhere else. How long does this stay here? Yeah, I don't know how this can help us if we don't have the means to reactivate it anyways. If it isn't already obvious, the Destined isn't exactly just a religious group. We are powerful mages as well oh as powerful as pojin no but strong so if this is still sizzling here how long do you think it'll still be active centuries Whoa. oh damn okay these rifts never close if this isn't where you're trying to go then i don't think this is your smartest place what I am saying is if you're trying to get home, which is not a part of Fendrea, then the Magistrate is as much an enemy to you as they are to us. True. Yep. So I think I can indeed tell you about our research and see if that would be helpful in any way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to do it back in town so we're not around a dead body or? We're going to go play a game. Oh. oh. It's time you all met Bag. Bag. 
So you guys leave Pojin's place. The destined guards go back to guarding, and you walk back to the northeast towards the Evergem. And you head towards Bag's tent. This is that octagonal tent you guys have seen before. It's a nice tent. It's made of different furs from things that looks like he probably killed himself. It is pretty empty. It's a chairs, desk, chest, and some furs. It looks like he sleeps on some of these furs. Ah, uh, troublemakers. Here to play? I guess so. Always. Apparently. He said we gotta. Solik comes in behind you and he goes, yes, we can't go downstairs unless we play. Okay. Mm. All right. Who's up first? Playing Pyramid. What? Pyramid? I'm in. I play this all the time back home. He hands you a set of dice. Thanks. So you know the rules. I do, but you should probably explain it to these boys just in case. Well, you see, these dice have different amount of sides. One is 12-sided, one is 8-sided, one is 6-sided, one is 4-sided. That's way too many. What would you ever need that many dice for? Dice are supposed to be like six. Why would you ever have more than six? Well, because this this is for different odds. How we do this, we're going to take the dice with the most sides. He shows you a d12. And we're going to roll that. Okay. We're going to do our buy-in of five gold. He takes five gold and puts it on the table. I do the same. And after each roll, we have a chance to bet more gold. The person with the highest number total at the end wins. Oh, okay. We start with the 12-sided die, move to the 8, then the 6, then the 4. I'm in. So start with a good base. All right, it's rolled. Bag got a 6. I got a 9. Nice start. Would you like to bet? Yeah, I'll... I'll raise it five. He calls five. All right. And then the D8, he got another six. Ooh, I got five that time. I don't want to call it catching up, but I do. Good one, bag. I'm not a funny man. I just create the games. Let's do another five. Puts five more gold down. And then he rolls the D6. He got a three on his D6. I got a one. No! He has 15, you have... 15. Uh-oh. It's all down to this one. And there's 15 gold on the table each. Seems rather thematic. Y yeah, seems like a great place to hold off. Wouldn't you say, my friend? I do. He rolls his d4 and gets a two. Uh. Three! Oh. Beginners sometimes win. I'm going to be honest with you, dog. There's not a lot of skill in this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. And you can see he rolls up his sleeve and he's got a bunch of dice. You didn't even see I was using multiple dice. What? I think you would do better if you were cheating. I was rolling with advantage because he was cheating the whole time and I still lost somehow. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. And he hands you the 15. <laughs> Good game, my boss. All right. Can we please go? You sure these outsiders can see it? Yes, they can see it. And he moves some of his bedding, and you can see there's a small trap door that leads it down. Pops it open for you. Ooh. Okay. Nifty. Do you want to lead the way for us? Solik has already started down, and this long ladder leads to an ice cave beneath the Evergem. This cave is a small passageway before opening up into a half-moon-shaped living area. There are fur rugs, some small offshoots where there are rooms. One is obviously a child's room, the other for parents. There is a small storage area, a little seating area. It is very modest, for sure. And this place seems like there has not been people living here in a long time. So, like, takes a second, looks around... Please don't touch anything. Okay. We, we didn't plan on it. Where are we right now? Whose uh, abode are we intruding on? And you can see Red Stream finally pipes up. A friend of mine used to live here. One of the most powerful people I've ever known. Her name was Kionopa. Whoa. She is the one who graced me with my sight again. Oh. Your sight? You were blind for a time? A long time. Oh, is that why you needed bubbles? Seeing eye pigeon? 
Bubbles was a help for quite some time. Now I can see through Bubbles' eyes, and now I can see other things. I knew Kionopa well, as well as Travis, before they got killed. Travis? Travis was her partner. Kionopa and Travis. A classic combination. (laughs) (laughs) I, like I said, was good friends with Kionopa. She was intelligent, though I could tell she had great burdens and kept most of her past a secret. I did not know much about her, other than her time here in Frost End and her love for Travis. Eventually, she and Travis had a son. Both her and Travis are dead, but no one knows what happened to Zen, their child. This is the last place Zen had been seen. In my visions, I can see him here. Oh. And a few other things change the instant he's gone. I'm not sure how to get any more information than I have right now with my current abilities. Hmm. Do you see Zen, like, playing? How old is Zen? Is he, like, still a kid? When I activate the site, I can go back to that day. It is ingrained here, as there is magic remnants from the day this happened. I can see Zen playing in his room, and he points. I see him playing with a small toy cup and ball, and all of a sudden, he disappears. The only other thing I see anywhere in the house that changes is there, and he points to just above the seating area, there are two small hooks in the wall. At the start of my visions, there is a staff there. Kionopa said it was her own when I had asked her about it previously. The same instant Zen disappears, so does the staff. How did Kionopa and, and Travis die? He looks to Sulek. Ilana. Ilana? Who, who that? Head of the magistrate. Oh, oh. Wait, yeah, we we we've never heard of her before, have we? No. Wait, magistrate here or magistrate in general? All of the magistrate. Didn't Desideria go by a different name before? Desideria and Alana are two very different people. Welp. Like fire and ice. Thou oh. are fucked. <laughs> okay, we got some Game of Thrones shit happening. Alana is known as the Flame. What is Desideria known as? A cold bitch. Ooh, that's <laughs> true. You can see Redstream has a little smile when you say that, Blueberry. Yeah, Redstream, you know you want to tap that. I, I feel you. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> when you say activate your sight, well, what does that mean? I mean, you, you're not walking ra- around blind. What, what type of sight are you activating? When Kionopa fixed my sight, she gave me magical enhancements as well. And I can see parts of her life. It's like she gave me a piece of herself. I thanked her every day. She seemed to get annoyed by it. How long ago did they die? 40, 50 years. Wow. Oh, dang. Ooh. ooh. So Zen might be like a full grown man. Oh, were they humans? We should have clarified that. They were human. Why did you look concerned when you said that? Kionopa had something about her. Made us believe she might not have only been human. Oh. Wait, like Chandra or like something different? Like something we'd never experienced before. Hmm. Like something the world had never experienced before. Oh. Oh. Like a heavenly being or a magical being or like a demonic being. I hope it's not the last one. Not demonic in any way. Okay, thank God. She was an incredibly magical being. Heavenly might not be the right term, though. Okay. Do you mind if I, like, take a look at Zen's room? I won't won't touch anything. Please. The more chances we have to figure out what happened here, the better. I'll join him. All right, so I would like to solve the riddle over there. Please allow me to do so. (laughs) I don't have the answer, so this is me saying that Xander's solving it and you're giving the answer. Ha ha. Give me an intelligence check. 
Riddle? Where is there a riddle? There's not. <laughs> Don't worry. I got a nat one. So that means oh, I'm about to make up some bullshit <laughs> and fully believe that All it's right, true. Hit us with it. Let's go. <laughs> What'd you find, Xander? All right. So based off of my interpretation, I'm standing over over here <laughs> in the parents' room. I went the wrong way. <laughs> So, based on my investigation of Zen's room, which I, you know, you know, I was taking a look around, I noticed that this was probably Zen's room. He got the big bed because, you know, he got to live lavishly. My boy was playing with his ball and cup, and at one point, he just, he flipped that ball so hard and landed so good in that cup that it opened an interdimensional space rift right at the point of impact, and it just sucked him and that staff over there just straight in uh like honestly never before seen in life ha had that happened you think that would have happened instantaneously yeah is the ball and cup still here it is i want to play with it i'll let xander go out to the parents room while i hear him mumbling and i'm gonna go into zen's actual room i want to start just playing with the ball and cup even though you said you wouldn't touch anything yeah he always immediately forgets instructions he's given. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a sleight of hand check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 24. First try right into the center. Feels really good. I hear Xander from across the cave, just like, and the ball slapped in so perfectly that an interdimensional rift, and I'm like, no, that's not it. I, I would have got it. That was a dope ball cup. Did portal open? Where is it? I don't know what he's talking about. Oh. That was clearly in and almost as perfect as I could have got it, honestly. I think it's another conspiracy theory he's got going on here. You, you think he's on those mushroom things again? He's making up stuff, so who knows? We gotta check his pockets later. Don't touch my pockets. What? Uh, not, um... <laughs> What's in them is mine. You guys are standing in the exact spot where the sound travels across the cave directly <laughs> into my ears. Damn it. <laughs> I promise we have exhausted all information we can get from here right now. Yeah, I'm sure you have. I'm just going to, I'm sure you've already done this, but I'm just going to summon up some more pollen and cast another <laughs> detect magic. But I'm sure you've already done this. It's a 30 foot radius, but I could walk so I can carry it with me across the room. Redstream actually points you towards where Zen disappeared. When you go over to where Zen disappeared, you can feel that this whole area is covered in pretty old abjuration magic. Protection magic, basically. Interesting. I am unfamiliar with that word. It's basically like protection. Like what Jet does? Like shields, like alarms, guarding things. Huh. All right. Hear me out. I know I just spewed off some madness just a second ago. What if it was more like keeping Zen in than trying to keep anything out? That's what, weirdly enough, I was thinking. I saw the first Harry Potter movie. And so what if it's like they were getting attacked by Ilana and... They were like, no, not the boy. And their love, like, created this protection magic over the baby right there. And then they died, but he survived. And then, I don't know, he poofed away. I've never heard of what she's talking about, but the sound's accurate. It's not too far-fetched, I guess. I don't know what happened to Zen at that point. If uh, Alana's still alive and Zen is just gone. Whoa, all right. Hail Mary, real quick. If Alana is the one that did that thing and Alana is possibly like potentially after us because of the whole magistrate thing, what if she turned Zen into the keeper? Hail Mary, shot in the dark. I'm curious about this freaking staff. I just want to investigate the hooks, even though I know they've been investigated for years. I'm just like, what? Is there anything else I can figure out? Can I, like, try putting both of my staffs up there and see if anything happens? Which staffs are you putting up there? First, my original, and then Desiderius. Oh, Blueberry, take this one, just in case. What? I throw her the goblin staff. Sorry about the skull! Ew! 
one thing I will say is with the detect magic, it doesn't look like any magic happened here in this area. And then you put him up slowly. Solik is like, where did you get that? Yeah, see, when we were running away with the queen and Desideria was after us, I took her staff. I got the video proof of that one. <laughs> you can see she's really angry right <laughs> there. You can keep it if you want. I don't know what to do with it, and it feels I feel like it kind of puts a target. No, we do not need it yeah, here. Yeah, all right, that's what I thought. Red stream, you can see his eyes actually just go from blue back to normal as he stops replaying this vision in his head. The only thing I can think of would be to somehow slow down time during my vision so I can see what happens in that instant. I don't know if anyone can do that. I could start talking. I, I People have said that like once I start going on something, it feels like time is slowing down around them. It really does. The only other place we have not been able to look into is the magistrate barracks. There is surely information there. They built it specifically atop Travis's old butcher shop. Oh. Well, that's just disrespectful. They built it right after Travis and Kionopa were killed. How were they killed? Ilana. You don't know any more context of Ilana killing them? I bet we'll find it in the barracks. True. But it happened in here. Did you find their bodies? It did not happen here. Oh. Do you have their bodies? Were their bodies ever actually seen? No. Oh. Hmm. The day Kianopa was killed, the Evergem stopped spinning. Whoa, it spun? It used to slowly rotate. The Evergem never rotated before she was here. Now maybe she was poofed to the Land of Bluegrass festivals, just like our <laughs> friends, and because she's in the other land, the gem like can't sense her anymore, so it stopped, but she's not, she's still alive. I just can't imagine that she would leave Zen here. Well, he, maybe he's there too. You don't know where he is. She has a point. I think we need to get inside that barracks and we need to do it now before the magistrate sends more guards. <sighs> oh man. Yeah. We've all done our fair share of B&Es, or at least I have. Actually, you know what? No, all y'all have you been- You can rope us into it by now, Xander. It's okay. Yeah, we've, we've all done it. We've all, we be in need a prison like that. We, hey, we can do this. A prison. We had to get a homie out. This is a magistrate prison. That makes you feel better. <sighs> hey, see, us being here just shows we're professionals. And I finger guns pressed into detention with fire at the end of them. <laughs> I will need to go with you. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Y'all up for some charades again? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> if Kionopa was at Travis's butcher shop or anywhere nearby, I may be able to get some other visions. Mm. Oh, it's like a radius thing. Is there a time when the barracks are mostly empty? Not really. Most people don't leave the barracks. The most common day the barracks are empty are days like today. The magistrate tends to take over most of the foxhole on days of ceremonies. Well, I guess there's our answer. I'm ready if you guys are. Yeah. Although we could also grab some disguises from them. Hmm. Guns blazing or sneaky boys? What you think, guys? I mean, we, we, we're pretty good at sneaking. We, we've done it once or twice before. We can, like, talk our way out of things. We have some, like, old magistrate armor, but it's kind of out of season. I mean, we're also pretty good at going guns blazing, and I'll flip the arcane pistol around my finger. Hey, question. How many magistrate uh, guards are here? I don't have an exact count. Okay. More than 20? We could take 20. Excuse me? You want to kill 20 people? No. Not, well, I guess why, not. Why would we want to go in and, and try to harm all these guys? I'm not I'm not saying we go in automatically guns blazing, but we can handle ourselves if it comes to that. We'll we'll do the, the, the good old B&E and sneaky boy, and you can dress up as the little... What, what were you before? School girl or something? You, you got that girl all over you, and then, oh, next thing you know, we got caught, and then we had to fight. Um, So we... It, we'll do, yeah, that's our plan. Bro, were you dreaming about me as a school girl? I... This is not a part... Um, It's... Where are we going? We're gonna circle back to this. 
Where can we get disguises? If Blueberry can be a little little bug again, I could make all of us invisible. Wait, fuck, no I can't. I would have to leave you out, Duder. Uh, and I know you have to come with us. I think invisible might be hard if we don't even know where the entrance to what I'm assuming they still have the ice cellar. Oh, being invisible would help. You, you suggested disguises like you might know where they are and we just kind of breeze past that. Do you know where we could get disguises and just like walk in? All I know is that the magistrate, a uh, few of the members tend to go to the foxhole on days of ceremonies. So there'll be some drunk magistrate members at the bar. <gasps> strip oh, poker. And we strip them. We had different <laughs> strip pyramid. <laughs> strip pyramid. We strip pyramid. You say? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'll be. In, I'll go invisible. Someone play Xander. You're pretty good at strip pyramid. I'm you gonna need... play strip pyramid in a public <laughs> establishment. There's no rules here. There's no rules here. Okay, we'll invite him back to our tents, Blueberry. Oh my god, not this again. Actually, let's let's be real. These guys are just drunk. We could probably just take them outside and like knock them out. Maybe they go out for a smoke break like those orcs did, and we just give them a bonk. We only need three. Well, okay, I lied. We need four if if you have to come because I can just change my jacket into like their uniform. So we just need four four uniforms of varying sizes. Or just one, actually. Why don't we do the invisible thing? The one person who's not invisible can wear your jacket. It could just be you, because then you, you're good at lying, usually, when you want to be. Everyone else can just be invisible or a little bug or something like me. If it's not myself, I could do, like, three people. I can be the magistrate dude. Mm-hmm. And there we go. And then you could be a bug. Yeah. Show me this. Show you what? Jacket. Oh. <laughs> And my jacket changed to the the male plate, the black male plate armor from the prison with just fur on top of it. <laughs> you saw magistrate guards this morning. You know what they wear here, right? Well, yeah, but this is just cool. I was just showing you that I could do it. Okay, but yes, I would like to see the actual disguise. Actually, try this time. <laughs> I was trying, Blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why he keeps going with that noise. Like, he, just he makes him, it every time. Let him do his thing, man. It, it makes him happy. It's from the mouth. Like it's... And he looks you up and down. Will this pass? I think so. I just wouldn't get too close to anyone. This place isn't that big where they won't recognize their own. At least from far away, no one will know who you are. I'm going to take out an eyebrow pencil from my bag. I'm going to draw on a little uh, unibrow on Sebastian. Why would you do that to me, Blueberry? Now you don't look anything like yourself. <laughs> that was so mean. <laughs> I don't think I have anything that would assist us in this case, other than I could make some of us fly. I don't think we need that yet. Fly? <laughs> I mean, I'm down, but like... In case we, in case we need it. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Emergencies. Slash fun when we're done. Uh, okay. Well, why don't we do this? Let's hit the road, Jack. If everyone's good to go... I mean, we didn't really do much today. I think we're all pretty rested. Yeah. I have three charges left on my staff, so I can cast Pass Without a Trace on us. Let's do it. Redstream looks towards Solik. I will get all the information I can. I think we should be ready. If anything goes wrong, the Magistrate will be here soon. And they will not be happy with any of us. Things will change here for the Destined very soon. So when you say when you say you guys are magical, how how magical are we talking? He can make us fly. So you're saying you have a lot of knowledge on on magic, and would you say you have knowledge on curses as well? Curses, maybe magic that could affect somebody in a bad way. Oh, we know lots of that. Blueberry, can can you help me take off my my shoulder armor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a ten. Excuse me. <laughs> Have you seen anything like this before? Solik walks up to you. Interesting. And this doesn't hurt. Uh, no. It's fine. Look at how white your skin is. Looks like frostbite. Yeah, but the circulation's still coming through. We, uh, we kind of stabbed him. I've been pretty warm, too. I, I don't feel like I have frostbite. Oh, and I should say, this happened before we got to this cold place. I can't say for sure what that would be. I would get it looked at immediately. 
who who would know about this? I, I, we don't even know where to go from here. Your guess is as good as mine. I can't think of anyone here. Maybe we can go to that, like, moon temple place um, near the school. Oh, what about our little, like, pixie friend? Fable. She might know something. She might know where to go. Or have, like, a device to detect it. I don't know. I think we should rendezvous in ten minutes or so at your tent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and we'll, like, bundle up blankets and, like, put them in our little sleeping bag so it looks like we're just asleep. Right in the middle of the day. Just like I like it. So you guys have, like, ten minutes before heading out. Is there anything you'd like to do? Book, 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 Ooh, book, 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 blueberry, book, 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 book. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God, guys, let's read this that we got from her house. Yeah, where's my reading glasses? Oh, yeah, we got ten minutes. <laughs> This is much less of a diary and much more of a notebook for writing down observations and assignments. Much of the beginning, you can see her observations on the Destins, mostly their ridiculous beliefs in Cosnir. Over time, you can see that she started writing down notes that didn't make sense. Some of the Destins would tell her one thing they believed, while others would contradict that with their own sayings. Mostly these were younger Destins or new to the Order, but this had happened even once with Redstream and Solik. Solik said that Cosnir had no connection to Fendrea anymore and that they were studying the Evergem to determine their own destinies through the remnants Cosnir has left behind. On the other hand, Redstream said they believed it possible to contact Cosnir through the Evergem to determine those destinies. She marked these differences as interesting, She also had a lot of notes on a man in the village named Bag, including rules to a game known as Bag's Pyramid. She had noted in the journal she believes Bag is not just an ordinary orc living in Frost End, and rather that he had something to do with the Destined, as many of them would visit his tent by the Evergem. The final page that was written on in this book were quickly drawn sketches with a description. It looks crude, but you can tell what it is supposed to be. It looks like you. Drawn here is an elven woman with a staff and long blonde hair, yellow dress, a dark-haired human with sharp jawline and guitar on his back sporting a blazer, a large man with hammer and shield wearing chainmail and a pink suit, a figure wearing a robe covering a flowery shirt and a snapback cap atop their head, and a green, winged, goblinoid creature with a tentacle on either side of its third eye. She has the staff, with a drawing of Desideri's staff with the ice blue gem atop it. Final note on this page, Scent was lost in Pastau, must have taken a ship. Wedding tickets from Matthias's University of Modern Magic. And for today, that's a wrap. Oh, dude, oh, what no. The f- Wait. No, dude, no. <laughs> they know no. how we got into the wedding. Oh, no. Bro, no. Wait, okay. That, okay. No, oh, dude, oh we, shit. Oh, my All right. God. We have to we save this info back. for behind the Are scenes. Are you fucking kidding behind me? Behind the scenes. Hey, in a week, if you want to hear us talk about this fucking nonsense, patreon.com slash cast party. Bitch. 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 <laughs> And there's so much more you can get there. You can support us. You can win free merch. You can join all our craziness. We just did Xander's alien abduction one shot, which is 100% canon. And if you want to get all that behind the scenes, you need to go visit us on Patreon. We haven't done this in a while. Does anyone else have anything to plug? Anna. I have a new D&D show. Yes. (laughs) It's so good. I'm on this new show called Mistletoe, which is a mixture of deities, um, currently Norse, and Greek gods and stuff, a war between the Norse and Greek deities and how it's affecting the mortals around them. I'm in there playing a death cleric to Hecate, and it's a good time. It's at twitch.tv slash Live on camera, Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And episode one just happened on April 29th, so we're not very far in. The VOD is up, because I got I, I was watching it at the gym. <laughs> yeah, the VOD is there if you want to catch up, and it'll, it'll be probably be, already be on YouTube by the time you're watching this. But if nowhere else, it's on Twitch. Visit us on our socials and stuff, you know. At Cast Party D&D, wherever you social media. 
not Snapchat. <laughs> what the fuck? Where's the cast party Snapchat? <laughs> you don't want to join the cast party Snapchat. No. <laughs> we need the cast party premium Snapchat. See all of our faces. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening. We will see you next week because you're going to go uh, listen to the BTS right now by signing up at castparty.com slash Patreon. Castparty.com slash Patreon. <laughs> we don't have that domain yet, Colin. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com slash Castparty. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Ryan, my God. <laughs>